I would like to tell you a bit more about the enemy AI. So right now I have one enemy inside the level and I'm going to click on it. And here you see that he has a few components. One of them is the enemy AI. So let's open this one. And what this actually is, is a, is a bunch of a list of settings that you can uh, set for each character type. So right now, let me walk you through it. Uh, first of all, we have a target. So when I press the play button and there's no target assigned, the enemy AI will automatically try to find the player character. Uh, but you can also assign a target beforehand. And you can actually do some fun things with this. So for example, if I uh, pick up the wooden crate and assign it as a target, then let's see what happens. Bam, he'll start attacking it. All right, uh, I can also duplicate this one. And name this enemy two. And I'm going to assign enemy one as the target. So there we go. Oh, he actually starts attacking the wooden crate, which is a bit of an unfair fight. All right, but uh, you'll see how it goes. Okay, um, next up, here we have some linked in components. We have a link to the enemy animator, to the enemy graphics, uh, to the rigid body component and the capsule, uh, which are actually right up here. Next up, we have the attack data. Uh, and this is a list of attacks. And if you want to implement your own attacks, you can increase this number and fill in all the fields in this section. So uh, this is actually the same as um, with the player combat component. So if, if you want to uh, know more about this, then please check out my video about the player combat and I'll walk you through each and one of these settings. All right, so I'll skip this right now. So the next up is the pick the random attack. Right now it's set to true. What this does is um, it chooses a random attack from the attack list. If I uncheck this, it will just be sequential. So we will go from attack one to two and three, etc. Next up is the, the Z distance of the attack, which is also covered in the video about the player combat. Um, and we have a defense chance. So this is actually a percentage. So right now there's a 15% chance that he will block my attack. So I can increase this to 100 or 50. So, all right. And then we have the hit recovery time. So every time that this enemy gets hit, it will take him 0.4 seconds to recover from the hit. So after 0.4 seconds, he can walk and attack again. Next up we have can defend during an attack. So what this means is when this enemy is in the middle of an attack, uh, he can break off the attack and start defending when he's attacked himself. So um, I did really like this, uh, so uh, I put it to true. And um, the next setting is attack player while airborne. So when the player is jumping, you can check this box and the enemy will start attacking him uh, while he's jumping. I didn't really like this, so right now uh, I'm unchecking this. So right now the game is set up that you are actually invulnerable during a jump, which I really like as a game mechanic, uh, but you can choose differently as well. So next up we have some checkboxes. Um, can hit enemies and can destroyable objects. Well, I've shown you he's just destroyed this crate, uh, but normally I don't really like this, so uh, I'm unchecking this. Here we are at the settings section. First of all, we have the enemy name. So right now his name is Steven. Uh, I do think that it was quite a lot of work to change all the names of the characters in a scene. So what you can also do for convenience is just remove this name and check this box. The enemy AI has a short list of names and it will just uh, assign a random name from that list. So you don't have to rename all these enemies. Uh, next up we have uh, the range distances and I have to tell a little bit about this. So the way the enemy AI works is based on distance. So the distance to the target. And I'll demonstrate this. 
So. So right now, all the way over here, you have the enemy tactic and it's set to engage right now, which means that he will try to get close to me and start attacking. I can change this in real time and set this to keep close distance. So right now, it will stop just right in front of me. And the distance between the player and the enemy is actually defined up here in the close range distance, 2.4. Next up, I will change this one to keep medium distance, so the character will fall back to the new range, 3.5, the mid-range distance. And lastly, I will set this to far range distance, it will fall back all the way over here, which is 4.5, far range distance. So next up, we have the range margin. Um, what you'll notice is when I get close, he will try to keep this the same distance. But when I go to the left side, he is just standing still uh, until I reach, I go far away and then he will start getting closer to me. Uh, so this margin that he will start to reposition himself is the range margin. Uh, you can also set this to zero, but I thought it was a little bit strange that the character will, will try to move every time. All right, so let's put this to one. Next up we have walk speed of the character and you can see that the walk backer speed is a little bit lower. So let's set this to 2. And the, the, uh, the reason I did this is um, when a character is staying at a distance and the player wants to attack him then it's a little bit easier to get close to him and just start attacking. Oh, by the way, um, I also need to mention this. When the player is attacking an enemy, it will uh, try to attack him back as well. So it do doesn't really stay in this passive state anymore. Uh, next one, we have the sight distance. So right now, when I press play, the sight distance of this enemy is set to 5. At the moment I'm standing too far away so he cannot see me. And you can also see this in the setting uh, because over here you have the target spotted boolean and you can see that uh, right now it's set to false. So when I walk towards him then I will be inside the sight range and he will spot me. And you can actually do some fun stuff with this so uh, in the demo I have set the sight distance of certain characters a little bit higher. So what you notice is that some characters will enter the level from the right and some characters will uh, start walking from the left side of the level all the way over to where you are. So they, they, those characters are standing much farther away and have a bigger sight distance. Next up we have an attack interval which is the time uh, between attacks. So right now uh, let's set this to 50 so he will instantly see me and try to attack me. There we go, and I'm also going to disable uh, getting hurt, so right now in the health system of the player I'll set him invulnerable, and I'm also going to disable the knockdown, so uh, all the way over here we have the knockdown, and he kind of set this to 100, so we don't have knockback attacks. So the, player, uh, the enemy is trying to attack me. When I'm uh, decreasing the attack interval, set to zero, there is no time between the attacks, so he will just continue and instantly start to attack me. Next up we have the rotation speed. So when the enemy is changing to another direction, then he will rotate, and this is the speed at which he will rotate. We have a look ahead distance and I will show you a little bit of a test. So I'll go to this scene. This is a test scene. And I'm going to increase the side distance of this character uh, to 50. Yes. So in the editor view, you can see this red line in front of the enemy. And what this does, it will check if there is a, a cliff in front of this enemy. And if so, he will stop at the 
edge of the cliff. And the distance that we will check in front of him is actually defined in the look ahead distance. So 0.4 is the distance right now. If I wanted to have him closer to the edge, then I can decrease this value to, for example, uh, 3 or 2. So you can tweak this. And if you have bigger characters, then probably you want to have a bigger look ahead distance. Uh, so if there are no cliffs in your level, then you can um, spare some resources by checking this box, ignore cliffs, so he will not check for cliffs at all. Next up we have knockdown timeout. So when we uh, attack this character, I will do so. There we go, he's down. So the time it takes for him to stand up is defined in the knockdown timeout. And this is also actually the, the window at which the, the player can do a ground punch or ground kick. Next up we have some settings for the up force of the knockdown or the knockback force. This, this is the force that is applied upwards and this is the force that is applied backwards. And next up we have some collision layer and I don't think you actually need to change this but this is uh, meant for the physics engine so uh, the environment layer is right now the, the layer that is checked for collision and if you want to add other layers as well then you can do so. And here is a checkbox random values. So uh, what this does, um, when you have a lot of enemies standing around you, then it can be quite annoying if they all uh, have synchronized movement. So when you check this box, then the values over here are randomized so the enemies uh, act a little bit different from each other. And next up we have some statistics, these are for debugging, so you can see what's going on at the moment. Uh, so right now you can see that you are in, the enemies think that we are in close range. His tactic is to engage us, so if he's standing up he will try to get to, to us. His enemy state right now is knockdown grounded. He's turned to the left, target is spotted, there's no cliff ahead of us and there's no wall. Uh, he's grounded, he's not dead, and this is the distance to uh, the target. Enemy AI is enabled, so I can also disable this one, and then uh, the enemy will do nothing at all. Alright. So next up I would like to explain a little bit more about the enemy wave system, and how you can set up multiple waves in a level. Um, what you can do in this project is just grab an enemy prefab and drag it into the scene like this. And now when you press the play button, then this enemy will start attacking us. There we go. But it actually is a lot nicer if uh, you have some kind of a flow and progression throughout your level. So that's why I created the enemy wave system. So let's bring it back. Here we go. So what this does is um, out here in this enemy wave system folder, you can see all these objects. So first of all, we need to defeat enemy one and enemy two. And then we have this area restrictor, which is actually one big green collider that's preventing the player from continuing. So let's uh, see how these objects are linked in. Click on the enemy wave system. And out here you can see uh, the, the enemy wave system component. Right now you can see we have three waves, wave one, two, and three. So I'll open one of them. First of all, we have the name of this wave, which is not really used in the game, but it's just for, for clarification. And then over here we have an enemy list. And right now you can see that there are two enemies, enemy one and enemy two, which are these game objects are linked in the system. And the way you can link them in is just grabbing them and dragging them into the system, like this. We also have an area restrictor, which is the big green box that I was talking about. This one. So you can also drag this box inside the area restrictor. 
like this. So um, the way this works is we have this list of enemies. When you defeat one, uh, it gets removed from this list. And where there are no enemies left, then this box will, uh, will be set to a trigger instead of a collider. And then when the player walks inside this trigger, then the next area will open up. All right, so how can you set up your own system? So let's show this to you. First of all, I'm going to drag in an enemy prefab like I did before. So here we go, we have the first enemy. I'm going to duplicate it. There we go. And let's name this enemy one and enemy two. There we go. So next up we need this big green collider. The way I do this is usually I do create a cube, but uh, I don't really need the render component. So let's remove the mesh renderer and also this one. Yeah. So right now we only have the box collider and I'm going to make it fairly big. So uh, let's make it uh, 10 now, wacht, one. 10 and 10. So here we go. We have this green box collider. And the last thing that we have to do is we have to assign a collision layer to this object. And we do this in the upper right corner in the layer section. So this needs to be a area collider. And what this does, it allows the enemies to pass this collider, but it does keep the player in this position. So it only collides with the player. All right, so let's name this Area Collider. Collider, there we go. So right now I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call it Enemy Wave System. No. There we go. And I'm going to add the component Enemy Wave System. There we go. So right now it's empty. Uh, and I'm going to set the first wave. There we go. I'm going to name this wave one. First off, we have the area collider. So I'm going to grab my collider and I'm going to drag it in here. So there we go. Next up, we have an enemy list. Uh, we have two enemies. And I'm going to drag these enemies into this position. So that's it. That's how you set up one wave. And after this wave is complete, uh, it will continue to the next wave until you're finished. And if it's finished, then we'll automatically start up the uh, level finish screen. The last thing that I want to mention is that you have a few settings below the, the enemy waves. So I'll close this up. And right now you can see slow motion settings. So what this does is when you defeat your last enemy, on the last hit, then uh, you can activate some kind of slow motion effect. And this setting below is actually the time uh, it takes to do the slow motion effect. So if you want to increase the duration, then increase this number. And lastly, you also have a load level on finish. So if you have uh, other levels, then you can choose to load this new level and fill in the name of your scene right here. And also don't forget it to add uh, this, the scene to the build settings, otherwise it will not load. Alright, I hope you like it and see you next time.